A man breaks the world record for working 84 years at the same company. NASA is going to launch naked pictures of humans into space in the hope of attracting aliens. And Rome residents have a curfew after wild boar attacks. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet. Ta-da! Got the news. It's weird. It's pretty weird. A 100-year-old man broke a Guinness World Record for working at the same company for 84 years. This means he began at the age of 16. Still working at 100? This guy's an inspiration. And boring. My, my guess is he's very boring. But that's okay. Some people can be boring. I mean, you just want to eat bologna sandwiches every day for the rest of your life. That's your damn business. Let's get some information about this 100-year-old Walter Orthman. He's from Brazil. Walter Orthman from Brazil with a name that doesn't sound like he'd be from Brazil, but okay. He broke the world record, though. That's what's important. He broke the Guinness World Record for the longest tenure at the same company. Uh, Orthman was born on April 19th, 1922 in the small Brazilian town of Brusque. He started working at 15 to help his family with some financial issues. January 17th, 1938, he was hired as a shipping assistant for a textile company called Industrias Renault. It's now known as Renault View. He was quickly promoted to a sales position and then became a sales manager. He's been a sales manager ever since. For a thousand years, sales Now, he's actually been at the company only for 84 years. But that's enough to break the Guinness World Record for the longest tenure in the same company. Orthman described this record as, quote, his proudest achievement. Oh, so cute. He said that focusing on the present was what drove him to make history. Here's a quote from Orthman. I don't do much planning, nor do I care much about tomorrow. (laughs) All I care about is that tomorrow will be another day in which I will wake up, get up, exercise, and go to work. You need to get busy with the present moment. The present, not the past or the future. Here and now is what counts. Here and now. (laughs) All right, Orthman. (laughs) If you say so. I'm not sure this is living in the present, though, spending... All your time at the same place forever? Get out, buddy. Get out there and see the world. The people that I know live in the present, they don't work at the same job for 100 years. They don't. They go from place to place. They have experiences. They take some risks. Um, This is exactly the kind of mentality, though, that I would expect a guy to work at the same place for 84 years. All I care about is I wake up and get up and go to work. That's all I care about. (laughs) He eats at the same breakfast nook, too, I'd I'd imagine, every single day. Orders the same damn thing. I like a plain bagel with plain green cheese. Every day for 174 years, a plain bagel and plain cream cheese. Why try other flavors? I live in the present. All there is when you live in the present is getting up. Waking up and eating that plain bagel with plain cream cheese. Someone once told me, Orthman, you ought to try a new flavor of cream cheese. It's pumpkin cream cheese, and it comes around in the fall. You should try it. I said, no, I live in the present. I only have plain cream cheese on my plain bagel. Someone once suggested to me that I try what's called an everything bagel. I thought that was a bunch of nonsense crapola. Yes, everything bagel. How can you put everything on the bagel? That's too much things on your bagel. No, no, no. I live in the present tense, which means I just have a plain bagel. There's only getting up, waking up, and having a plain bagel. That's how you live. I should write a book on how to live. Wake up. And go to work. 
Back to Orthman, who celebrated his 100th birthday with his co-workers, his friends, and family last week. Orthman is in good health, according to Guinness, so he can stay working at this company for another 84 years. He has great mental clarity and memory, by the way. Good for a 100-year-old. He's got to be in some good mental state if he's still working at 100. Most of the time, they let you go in your 80s. It says here, his favorite place to be. Can you guess where it is, guys? Where's Orthman's favorite place to be? That's right, in the office. His advice for obtaining the same level of longevity as he has is to work for a good company where people feel motivated. When we do what we like, we don't even see the time to go by. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't see the time go by. How do you work in an, uh, the same office for 84 years and you don't see the time go by? I worked at an office for one year. Man, did that time not go by. I'm so sorry. I'm making fun of this 100-year-old man. I should just give him so much credit for working until he's 100. I mean, just people just don't do that. I'm saying outside of the fact that he was at the same company. He's, just, he's still working at 100. That's just amazing to me. So kudos to you, Orthman. You broke a Guinness World Record. Have a Guinness! <laughs> NASA is launching naked pictures of human beings into space in the hopes of attracting some aliens. Basically sending porn into the galaxy. Just hoping that aliens like porn. NASA scientists are very busy trying to make contact. They plan to launch pictures of naked human beings into space in the hope of luring aliens to us. The depictions will also include an invitation for aliens to respond. Um, this is if an intelligent alien race find these space nudes. Fortunately, the hypothetical aliens shouldn't be too shocked by these unsolicited nudes. The pictures aren't graphic photographs of naked humans, by the way, but instead it's a drawing of a naked man and a naked woman. The men and women are waving in an attempt to look more inviting. Hi, come and visit us. Do you like naked humans? There's more of us. Come, come see the naked bodies. You'll, if you love this photo, you'll love Pornhub. <laughs> NASA scientists revealed this image in a study that's part of a project called The Beacon in the Galaxy. I've uh, covered this beacon in the galaxy before. We can't stop reaching out to the aliens, guys. I, mean, I don't know. How many more movies of aliens destroying humanity do you have to see before you stop inviting aliens? But this is what NASA seems to be all about. NASA's lonely. They want to talk to some aliens. Well, these scientists think the pixelated illustration of a naked man and woman waving hello could help us finally make contact with extraterrestrials. I love that they think an image of humans waving will help us make contact. Let's say they see a photo of us waving. Are they even going to know that that's an invitation? There are animals on this planet that don't recognize a human wave. Go ahead, wave in an ant. The ant has no clue. Wave at a bird. You think the bird understands you waving? And that's a creature that is not alien. It, it grew up carbon-based on the Earth. Like, we're surrounded by... Non-alien entities that don't understand a wave. You think an alien's going to get a wave, scientists? What are they paying these idiots? That's what I want to know. I mean, it's too much. It really is too much. Let's get a little quote from one of these NASA nerds. Well, logic suggests a species which has reached sufficient complexity to achieve communication through the cosmos would uh, very likely have attained high levels of cooperation amongst themselves and thus will understand the importance of peace and collaboration and understand the image is welcoming. Yeah. Let me tell you something, scientist. Uh, any alien species that has reached sufficient complexity to travel the entire cosmos or communicate throughout the entire cosmos is so advanced, they, they already know what's going on here. You don't have to send a, a written invitation. They're already aware. That's implied in the phrase, reached sufficient complexity to achieve communication through the cosmos, which you've just stated. 
<laughs> like, really? If they are so advanced, they're just traversing all across galaxies. They've achieved faster than light speed travel, perhaps teleportation, some technology we don't even understand. They already know what we look like naked. It's just implied. <laughs> if they're interested in us, then they can observe us and we won't even know about it. Trust me, we won't. You, should, you work at NASA, you should know that. You should know this isn't the very first time that naked depictions of humans have been sent into space. The Pioneer plaques sent to space on the 1972 Pioneer 10 and 1973 Pioneer 11 missions also featured illustrations of a naked man and woman. So apparently we've been sending nudes for decades. Send us your nudes. If you're going to send nudes, man, it shouldn't be a pixelated, horrible drawing. Just send, like, actual nudes of the hottest human beings on the planet. I don't know who those would be, but, you know, try, man. Who do you guys think would be the best representations of hot nude earthlings? Call me with your with your vote. Six four six four five zero twenty twelve. I expect some calls. I want to hear what male and female, or identifying as male and female. <laughs> I'm gonna say Beyonce is one of them. Or uh, oh, I love Salma Hayek still. Oh, I love her still. Do you think she'd hang out with me? You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. After wild boar attacks in Rome, there is a curfew. Residents in several neighborhoods in northern Rome have had to impose a curfew after a bunch of attacks by wild boars. These wild boars for years have roamed around the Italian capital. Now they're attacking humans. Let's find out why. In the most recent encounter, a lady said that a boar, quote, was on top of my head. She had a boar on top of her head. How'd you get a boar on your head, lady? What are you using for a hair tie? Kilbasa? I don't know if boars like kilbasa. I imagine they would. A woman said she was also pushed to the ground during an attack on Sunday night. This incident prompted exasperated residents in Balduina and six other districts to impose an 8.30 p.m. curfew. That's a very early curfew. All because of the boars. Wild hogs running all around Rome. They're telling their citizens now, don't go out after 8.30, especially if you have a dog. Here's a quote from someone who knows about why you shouldn't be out. Because at night, if somebody falls over or is hurt and nobody is around, then they could remain on the ground for who knows how long. Who knows how long they could be on the ground? And then the boars. Here come the boars. Hey, you get the boars on your head. Now they got a guy in the story named Franco. And I think you have to have a minimum of one Franco in every Italian related story. Franco is the president of the residence activist group. He described this curfew as an act of self-protection by the citizens because the authorities have failed to establish effective protocols. And uh, this is important because uh, you, you need to know that this curfew wasn't put on by the authorities it was by the citizens themselves. <laughs> They're that frightened that they've put a curfew on themselves. Because of the wild boars on your head. You don't want the wild boar on your head, do you? Stay at home. There's another quote from Franco here. Hey, this latest attack, the victim was an adult. But what if it happens to be a child eh? with the boar's teeth? Even just a bite to the leg is enough to jeopardize someone's life. What if it was a child, eh? Now we got somebody named Giovanni in the story. You must have a Giovanni quote in every Italian story as well. Giovanni runs a similar organization as Franco. These animals are getting closer and closer to the people. 
It's not just at night. They're walking the streets at all hours of the day. Well, if they're walking around in all, at all hours of the day, I don't know if this curfew is the answer because you're, just, you're setting a time limit on something that time isn't really affecting. But I like where your head's at, Giovanni. Why don't you guys just shoot these boars, man, and just have a big feast in the square, in the town square. An Italian boar feast. Yeah, man, serve up huge heaping plates of wild boar meat. With a gabagula! Now, it says here the Rome authorities have responded. They've announced some anti-boar measures, including fencing off areas of a natural park where the animals can enter the city and regularly collecting the waste, particularly trash bins in areas close to the animals' main entrance points. But is this enough? Uh, We have a quote from someone named Massimo. He's the director of the Wild Animals Unit. Oh, boy. He said, Boar it. Boars attack humans only if they feel there's a threat to their offspring or their source of food. Okay, is he right? Here's a quote from Massimo. These are the two critical elements that can unleash an attack from any wild animal, not just a boar, but if a boar is close to an overflowing trash bin and a human approaches, it will act in a way to remove the threat of its essential food source. The real problem in Rome is that there's been no management of the problem. (laughs) <laughs> the real problem in Rome is that nobody's taking care of the problem. <laughs> That's the best quote ever. The main problem of the boars in Rome are the boars in Rome. <laughs> we need to get the Pope on this. <sighs> well, you know, what are you going to do? No matter where you live, you must have huge problems. It just seems to be the way of the world these days. Not just a pandemic, you need a drought, you need fires, you need war, you need inflation. You just, the universe is just coming down hard, guys. (laughs) Hopefully the aliens will come and save us. They'll be attracted by our nude photos. (laughs) Hey, we need to get down there and save these hot humans. Well, that was a pretty good Weird AF News episode, I have to say. I had a lot of fun with it. And going into it, I just wasn't in the mood. You ever go to work and you're not in the mood? I don't know how that guy went to work for 84 years to the same place. I just, I'm already tired of being in this closet. I've been in here an hour. <laughs> <I couldn't. laughs> All right, anyways. Uh, yeah, ended up being okay. So thanks for, thanks for being with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And we learned something about the world, the weird world in which we live. Yes, would you like to learn about the weird world that we live in? Well, listen to Weird AF News. I got a nice review of the podcast on Amazon. Let me read it. It's pretty funny, too. It's from someone named Equal, Equal Op Joker. The title is Chicken and Waffles, and I got five stars, and I'm so grateful. Whenever I get five stars, it makes me very pleased. Equal Op Joker wrote, Your podcast has changed my life. I never knew Florida was such a dangerous place. Florida man needs to be studied to learn what his role was in the evolutionary scheme of things. I also never knew the perils of podcasting from a closet. You should do your Florida Fridays from the bathroom. That would be epic, plus a whole lot of new sounds for your soundboard. Flush! This podcast should be listed on the State Department website as a travel advisory for foreigners who might inadvertently travel to Florida otherwise. (laughs) First of all, this individual is a good writer, very articulate, and hilarious. So big shout out to Equalop Joker. I love this review. It's so good. Um, And it offsets the bad reviews I got. I don't understand these reviews, where they come from. I really don't. This This one is amazing, though. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. You guys can leave me a review if you want. It helps. Amazon especially. Uh, but also on uh, iTunes, also known as Apple Podcasts. On Spotify, on Spotify, you can't actually write a hilarious smart review like equal op joker did but you can give five stars which is pretty helpful as well so if you guys would like to support the show in those sorts of ways that's very helpful but also uh supporting by going to the patreon and joining is another way to do it i'm putting the call out there for uh for questions i'm going to do another q a video i had a lot of fun with the last one so and it it seemed like everybody in the patreon enjoyed that My, my responses are usually kind of funny so we're going to do a Q&A video. Put your questions in the Patreon, and I'll answer all of them on a video. We'll say next week sometimes. Uh, 
The Patreon can be joined by going to weirdafnews.com and clicking on the Patreon banner or download the Patreon app and uh, do a search for Weird AF News or go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews. Tomorrow being Friday, I'm going to do Florida Friday. So that episode is only weird news from Florida from this week. If you come across, if you come across any weird news from Florida, just send it my way. I'm already getting stories, and I appreciate that. My email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can tweet them at funnyjones or send them on Instagram in a DM at funnyjones as well. Thank you so much, and I look forward to tomorrow, Florida Friday. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, Jonesy, my little wet dream Boston bean. It's the state of Florida calling. Hey, I was listening to yesterday's show, and I heard about that drill me, oh, a dr- not drill me, drill sergeant over in Thailand who was making the recruits do something if they couldn't do their tasks. They couldn't do enough sit-ups or pull-ups or finish the march. He was making them drink semen mixed with fish sauce as a punishment. <laughs> Ooh, punishment. Well... Where do I sign up? Woo-hoo. I'll tell you. Private Florida. Reporting for duty. Or is that reporting for do me? I don't know, man. I've drank a lot of semen in my life. In fact, I just had some the other day. And I think that if it was mixed with fish sauce, that would be pretty amazing. So, like... That doesn't sound like torture or a fireable offense to me. That just sounds delicious. Now, being beaten with sticks, going into organ failure, all the other abuse on those Thai conscripts, that sounds rough. But semen mixed with fish sauce, that just sounds yummy. Hey, Jonesy, it's Lily. Um, So the article you had about the limb lengthening procedure to make people taller, and I know you mentioned that, you know, you're not the tallest guy and that sometimes you wish you were taller. I think, you you know, you've said stuff like this on the show before. So I want to give you, like, a flip side perspective because I think as humans we are never happy with what we have or what we've been given, and we always think, like, the grass is greener, right? So for me personally, like, I have curly hair, and it's really thick. I have a lot of hair my whole life. Um, and other women who have, like, more thin hair or straight hair that's hard to curl, like, they look at me and they're like, oh, your hair's so great. I love it. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me tell you how much time it takes to shampoo, condition, blow dry. Like, my hair is a pain in the ass, and I hate it, right? I wish I had thin, straight hair. Um, same as, like, you know, if you see, a, you know, if a woman sees another woman, uh, with big boobs, and she's like, oh, I wish I had bigger boobs. That's so great. And then, like, the chick with big boobs is like, no, I need a reduction because I have back problems. Like, this is not great. This sucks, you know. So I think you should be happy with the height you are. I think shorter men, people in general should be happy because life as a tall person sucks. Let me tell you, like, my husband is six foot one, and it – I mean, there's so many things, like clothes don't fit right. He has to shop at certain stores. We literally have had to buy different a different vehicle. When we get when we got married, I had to get rid of the car that I had because he didn't fit in it. And I loved that car. And that was like the worst thing ever was having to get rid of it. So like we have to plan the vehicles we can have. We had to get a bigger bed because, you know, the bed we had didn't fit he didn't fit him, so we had to get a bigger bed and now like nothing else fits in our bedroom except for this huge bed. Um, what else? Like he has a hard time finding shoes that fit. He has to go to different clothing stores. Um even like a lot of older homes that have lower ceilings, like if there's a ceiling fan he'll walk into a ceiling fan and like he's only six foot one. Like that's not incredibly tall. You know, we know people that are six, four, six, six. Uh, My brother-in-law is six foot seven. It's even harder to be, if you're that tall, like if you're that tall, you need to be a professional basketball player to have the salary, like the amount of money to customize your life to fit your needs as a tall person. Like, you need to be able to build a house with 12-foot ceilings so that you don't walk into a ceiling fan. You need to be able to buy, like, a giant vehicle and pay for all the gas um, to just in order to fit in it. So life as a tall person is not great. Um, 
speaking as somebody that's five foot four, let me tell you that I love being short and small because I can fit into small space. <laughs> it sounds like I'm tired. Hey there, Donya. This is Peter calling from Jacksonville, Florida, the hometown of Leonard Skinner and also the largest city in the USA. You have something on your show the other day about some Wiccan festival over in Germany, and I think you called it Val Kilmer's Snatch. And uh, you have it wrong. It's Balderschnacht. And that means uh, that means it's a festival for the witches over there that happens uh, uh, at the time of year that changes on May 1st. That's like the welcoming of new things, new growth. You know, kind of like Easter, there's eggs, and that represents new life. Well, if there's one thing, I mean one thing that I know, it's the occult and martial arts and music like Leonard Skinner and reptiles and uh, 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 music and movies. And so you said Val Kilmer's net. Oh, in America. I know about America because I'm a real patriot. So um, – you said Val Kilmer snatch. Well, that's part of America, and Val Kilmer was in the movie Top Gun, and I know that this had nothing to do with Val Kilmer snatch. You said snatch, and it was not S-N-A-T-C-H. It was schnacht. You had an S in there, and knocked. N-A-C-H-T is German for knocked. So uh, as far as martial arts, uh, I know – all the martial arts like Mai Tai and Tug McGraw and Capoeira and those kinds of things. Of course, martial arts uh, like UFC fighting and all that kind of stuff. But as far as this Wiccan thing, I know all about the occults. So you did have that name wrong on that. Anyways, that was what I wanted to call in and tell you about. That uh, Wiccan festival, oh, man, that's scary stuff, those Wiccan witches. I mean, I'd, I'd say sons of witches instead of sons of bitches because those, those women witches, those are nasty, nasty things, and they can really get into some scary stuff. I mean, we're talking voodoo shit kind of their stuff there. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to call and tell you about. No, no, it's not your stinking cousin. I got to go, Jones. I got a situation here. <laughs>